Day 130, electrostatics, examples 4 and 6. Here we have the hydrogen atom, which is a proton orbited by an electron. Let's draw that. Here's the proton. It's positive. And I'll use blue for the electron. Here's my electron. It's negative. And it orbits around the proton at the radius or distance given of one or 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. That's how far apart those two are. And they're attracted because of Coulomb's law. Opposites attract. And they're also attracted because of gravity. They have some mass. Now let's compare those two forces. Let's first calculate the force of gravity. They're attracted to each other. Let me remind you, this is a while back now. I don't expect you to remember this. The force of gravity is capital G times mass number one times mass number two divided by the distance between the two centers to center squared. All the information is given there except for big G, which I will remind you again. I don't expect you to remember it. Big G is the universal gravitation constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times the product of the two masses, mass number one, uh, electron or proton, let's take the proton first, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms, that's good units, and the mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms, once again, kilograms are good, we don't want grams, kilograms is what we want, or what we want, and divided by the distance squared, 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11th meters, that's good, squared. So you go to your calculator, you punch all those numbers in, being very careful, you end up with a gravitational force, sometimes you call it F sub G for gravity, 3.63, or, well, 3.63, times 10 to the negative 47th newtons. That's a really, really small force. But they are attracted slightly because of gravity. Probably insignificant, though. Let's see what happens here with the, uh, the electrical attraction. According to Coulomb's law, the electrical attraction, F sub E, equals, well, K times Q sub 1 times Q sub 2 divided by the distance squared. Same format, different concept. So the electrical force of attraction here is 9 times 10 to the 9th times the charge. Each charge is 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th. I could write that down twice, or a better way to write that is squared. I'm going to multiply that twice, the product of the same two charges. And the negative doesn't matter here. Once again, that's just telling us that they attract each other. Divided by the distance squared, same distance, the 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11th quantity squared. It turns out that the electrical force of attraction here is 8.26 times 10 to the negative 8th newtons. It's a pretty small force as well, but it's not as small as the gravitational force. Basically, the electrical force here is dominating. It's much, much, much bigger than the gravitational force. It's really the force that keeps the electron in orbit. Now, the problem says to compare these two. As we've mentioned before, so we're comparing, when two numbers differ greatly like this by orders of magnitude, different powers of 10, it's not good to compare them by percent difference or absolute difference, but by magnitude difference. Or, for example, just divide them. Take the big number divided by the small number, the big number here is the second one, the 8.26 times 10 to the negative 8th. If I take that number, the 8.26 times 10 to the negative 8th, and divide it by the small number, it tells me how many times bigger the big number is. 3.63 times 10 to the negative 47th. So if I divide that, I get roughly round it off to one sig fig now. It doesn't really matter. The, the numerical part here, the integer part, doesn't matter. It's roughly 2 times 10 to the 39th. That's the important number here, the 10 to the 39th. In other words, in other words, 
the electrical force F sub E is roughly equal to 10 to the 39th times the gravitational force. 39 powers of 10 greater. It's the force that actually keeps the electron in orbit around the proton. Here's a good problem. Uh, an application of Coulomb's law, really highlighting the vector nature of these forces. We have three collinear charges here. They lie along a line, separated by 20 centimeters between the negative 4 microcoulomb and the negative 2 microcoulomb, and then 30 centimeters between the negative 2 and the 3 microcoulomb charges. Once again, we'll be using Coulomb's law to calculate each pair of forces, F sub E, electrical force, is K times Q sub 1 times Q sub 2 divided by the distance between them squared. This applies to any two charged particles at a given time. So we have to do this in phases here. For example, pick any two and ignore the third. Let's take the negative 4 microcoulomb charge and the negative 2 microcoulomb charge. Those two charges by themselves, ignoring the three, they are repelling each other because they're like charges. They're both negative. That means they're both the same sign. They repel each other. The way I'm going to show that now, it's very important that you draw this accurately. They repel each other. So these are two arrows showing that they're repelling each other. I'm going to call that F sub 1. Call this F sub 2. But those are equal and opposite, and I can calculate that pair of forces, repelling forces, by Coulomb's law. F sub 1 is going to equal magnitude F sub 2, opposite direction though, equals 9 times 10 to the 9th. times 4 micro, you don't need to worry about the negative, but you do need to worry about the micro. I'm going to put that in there. On your calculator, you'll enter that as 4 times 10 to the negative 6. That's what micro means, times 2 micro, divided by, and we'll convert this right away, 0 0.20 meters. That needs to be in meters squared. So you go to your calculator, and you punch all those numbers in. Once again, remembering to plug in 4 times 10 to the negative 6 and 2 times 10 to the negative 6. Number crunch all of that. That comes out to be 1.80 newtons. As indicated in the diagram with the blue arrows of repulsion. So I'm going to put a box around that. It's not the final answer, but it's an important number to keep track of. All right, let's take another pair. Let's take the negative 2 microcoulomb and a, and a positive 3 microcoulomb charge. Those are attracting each other. I'll use the red arrows to highlight that. They attract each other because they're opposites. One's positive, one's negative. I'm going to call this F sub 3 and F sub 4 equal and opposite, and I calculate them the same way. F sub 3 equals F sub 4 equals 9 times 10 to the 9th times 2 microcoulombs times 3 microcoulombs divided by 0 0.30 meters squared. So F sub 3 equals F sub 4. Go into your calculator. That comes out to be 0 0.60 Newtons. Once again, the direction is indicated on the diagram. All right, we have one pair of charges left, the outer two, the four and the three. Ignoring the, the guy in the middle, the negative two, the negative four microcoulombs and a positive three microcoulombs attract each other. How do you show that with arrows? Well, you show it with arrows like this. I'll use black in this case. They attract each other. I should probably draw these two arrows short because it's going to be a small force. It's going to be a small, for small pair of forces because there's a great distance here. But that's F sub, let's call it for lack of creativity, F sub 5 and F sub 6. They're both pointing to the left. I mean, F sub 6 is pointing to the left, F sub 5 is pointing to the right. Those two particles attract each other. But we do the same calculation once again, F sub 5 equals F sub 6 equals 9 times 10 to the 9th times 4 microcoulombs 
times 3 microcoulombs divided by, now be careful with the distance here, it's a total of 50 centimeters. 20 plus 30 is 50. So that's over 0 0.50, that's 0 0.50 squared. So f sub 5, which equals f sub 6, equals, plugging it all in, 0 0.43 newtons. Another important number. So there's three pairs of forces, each of those magnitudes, the directions indicated on the diagram. The diagram is very, very important here because we need to figure out the net force on each of these three charges. For example, the negative 4 microcoulomb charge has two forces acting on it. Now, this is a fairly straightforward vector problem at this point, but you've got to look carefully. I want to find, let's call, well, I'll use, I'll use red. I'm going to find F net on the negative 4 charge, the negative 4 Coulomb charge. Well, bottom line is it's going to be the sum, the vector sum of those two forces, but F sub 1 is to the left. You're looking at the diagram there. On the negative 4 microcoulomb charge, it has two forces acting on it, the F1 to the left and the F5 to the right. Look for the bigger one. Which one's bigger? F sub 1 is bigger. So you take the bigger force, the 1.80, subtract the smaller force going to the other direction, 0 0.43. So F net, let's just say F net, for the negative 4 microcoulomb charge is 1.37 newtons to the left. And how do I get the direction to the left? This is one of my three answers. Well, the 1.37 newtons to the left is because the bigger force, F sub 1, is to the left. It's beating, in a sense, F sub 5. But F sub 5 is pulling against it. That's why it's subtracted from the 1.80. All right, let's go to the middle charge, the, the minus 2. F net for the negative 2 microcoulomb charge is going to be equal to now the sum of those two. If you look at the diagram, those vector arrows, F sub 2 and F sub 3, are both acting on the negative 2 microcoulomb charge. They're both pointing to the right. So we look in our table over here on the left for those numbers. F sub 2 is 1.80 newtons plus F sub 3, which is 0 0.60 newtons. So the net force on the negative 2 microcoulomb charge is 2.40 newtons to the right because you're adding 1.80 and 0 0.60 and they're both pointing to the right so the net force is to the right. We're two-thirds of the way done with our final answers here. And finally we're looking at the 3 microcoulomb charge. So the F net for the 3 microcoulomb charge, you look at the diagram, it's, there's F sub 4 to the left and F sub 6 to the left. So I'm going to look for those in my computations over there. I'm going to have F sub 4, which is 0 0.60, plus, because they're both in the same direction, 0 0.43. F net, therefore, just add those arithmetically, is 1.03 newtons and the direction is to the left because they're both pointing to the left and that's my final answer so I found the net force on each of the three given charges thanks for sticking with this one that's quite a lot of work good luck in class